okay uh, welcome to everyone now agil can start okay father after the challenges of this past year we are optimistic that the brighter days are just in front of us as we move forward we feel it's important that we continue to look to our future in any situation good evening to all i'm super excited to have you all here excited about all the valuable informations and interactions that we're going to experience today before we begin let me remind you of one thing that this event will be recorded and you can share it with your friends who couldn't join with us or who needs to hear this you can find the video on youtube under dr benny palati vidyam vidyalayam channel joining us today is an amazing guest i would like to welcome our honorable chief guest mr linmon thomas chief digital officer at mars wrigley asia and india He has almost 16 years of pioneering success in delivering strategic results and leveraging technology to drive the business growth. We're all glad that you could join us today in this event. Also joining us today is a special guest, Father Dr. Benny Palati, organizer and director of education. I welcome you, Father, to this event. What's special about Father is that he loves helping young adults just like us. to give us a push and more confidence to embrace our future in a successful and safer way and now let me welcome our hod vinod chandran sir who's the backbone of our department and has a great vision in providing these events and activities to the students to move forward in their career i would also like to welcome all the faculty members and all the students who has gathered in this online event now let's just head straight to the event as we are about to begin this session Yes, Father Dr. Benny Palati to give an introduction about today's session. Over to you, Father. Dear friends, we live in a new world, a world where there are many technological additions and super specialty services. The changes brought to the daily life are very much influenced. by these innovative technologies children and youngsters are exposed to the technology languages and machine systems in their early age itself they are into it they are tech savvy but how far youngsters are able to upskill themselves for the latest and growing technological trends are of concern the core values and skills are not that easy to learn and master youngsters are waiting to find best suitable jobs for their secure future finding out implications of later te- technology for daily life necessities will help youngsters to create new avenues of jobs youngsters also need to skill themselves as per the latest developments in the technology completion certificates alone won't make them fit for the market they need to aggressively move forward young minds can outshine innovation makes the technology always young and new new normal after covid is for the young youngsters have to grab the opportunities by upskilling and updating with latest tools we have 29th session of my career my identity at dr benny palati vidu vidyalaya youtube channel today's discussion aims at helping youngsters to identify their natural skills to match them for the future technological requirements it's not just making themselves just like machines but it is preparing them for mastering controlling and managing technology because human is greater and far superior than technology innovative technologies rule the world by spreading its wings to every aspect of human life business education service sector engineering medicine and what not knowing the range of innovative technologies and its style of influence should help youngsters to make themselves fit to it it is time to identify one skills and match it with the market necessities and innovative spaces identifying one skill should start by knowing oneself today we look at 
one of the latest and progressive areas where the innovative technologies are contributing it, its benefits and potentials. It is the managerial areas. There is also digital management roles. It has its disciplinary details, its theories and developmental milestones. How can the organizational management roles can be improved by the facilitation of the innovative technologies is the point of discussion today. Technology has grown. Note that there is robotics, artificial intelligence, and big data. There are many novel developments, courses, and integration strategies. Advancing technology means you should have expert skill, skill set to work with technology. It is not just awareness of technology. Youngsters have to be strong with skills to manage and manipulate technology for the daily life necessities. This is called creativity. Everything we talk today is of cutting edge science, business room, core values, and technology. And we have an expert who handles the topic exponentially and helps the CEOs to learn the basics to the mastery level. It's a young master. It is none other than Mr. Linu Mohan Thomas. He is very dynamic and creative. The leadership and managerial qualities in him made him into the great positions and leadership responsibilities. He is currently the chief digital officer of Mars Weekly, Asia and India. I am grateful towards Mr. Linuman for being with us today. We have also with us the students from Naibunya College, Chertala and the faculty. Welcome everyone. Dear friends, Let's discuss and interact with the expert. Enjoy the session. I invite you all again. Now, over to you, Akhil. Thank you, Father, for this session uh, with your presentation. To tell you more about innovative technologies, here's Nibia Mall, second year BSc campus science student. Technology is science or knowledge put into practical use to solve problems or invent useful tools. Innovative technology brings major shifts and progress in every aspect of human life. We are creators of this innovation through our computer applications. Let us result great progress and change. We have a lot of gain from technology. Ease of access to information, serve time, better communication, cost efficiency, better learning techniques, innovation in many fields. As we know, in recent times, the world has been achieved many technologies. Artificial intelligence and machine learning Robotic process automation, urge computing, virtual reality and augmented reality, 5G and so on. Yes, technology is a huge factor in the progress of our world. Thank you. Thank you, Nivya. Moving on to the most awaited part, here's Linamon Thomas. Today, he'll be sharing his experience and more about business leadership to help us with our path forward. Sir, over to you. Thank you, uh, Father Benny. Uh, I welcome you, uh, the faculty and the students uh, to this panel, to this discussion. I feel honored to be part of this discussion. And I'll be honest with you that uh, I'm a little jealous as well because uh, such opportunities which you have never existed when I grew up. And uh, a huge uh, applaud to, to Father Benny for the leadership that he is uh, rendering to, to, to activities like these and initiatives like these, which benefits lots of our students. So uh, as I said, I, I feel envy as well. So uh, let me uh, share my presentation as well. Just one of you confirm to me that you can see my screen. Yes, yes. Great, thanks. So let me just first start talking about the reason I'm here is because I work for Mars. Uh, so let me just introduce my organization to you. 
Uh, Mars as an organization is almost a $40 billion company now. Uh, we have five segments of businesses. A lot of you may not be aware that uh, we, we also have pet care or pet products like uh, Pedigree, Whiskers, Sheba. These are all products that we produce, manufacture for uh, pets uh, in, in, in this world. Uh, we also have Mars Wrigley Confectionery. Uh, a lot of you uh, are, are aware of these products, which uh, I also enjoy eating them. Mars, Snickers, m and Skittles. Uh, we also have a food segment, which is, uh, which is pretty much predominant in the US and Europe markets. Uh, we also have drinks, and uh, we also started with nutri nutrition initiatives in, in several countries, and we've launched this in India as well under Mars Edge program. Uh, we are present in almost 80 countries, uh, started way back in 1911 in, in, in McLean, Virginia, USA. Uh, in India, we are not a very, uh, uh, we are a young organization, a young company. Uh, and, and, and what I've learned from this uh, company is, and, and what I really live in my daily life is also the five principles around quality, uh, responsibility, mutuality, efficiency, and freedom. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, let me start with a, with a small story to, to all of you. Uh, and this, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this goes back to a place in US again, uh, the state of Alabama, uh, a place called Huntsville. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you are interested in spacecrafts and uh, space shuttles, et cetera, but one of the largest museums related to spacecrafts is located in this state of Alabama. Uh, in this museum, uh, there are several uh, rockets, satellites for people to see. And if you ever get a chance in your life to visit the place, it is, it is brilliant and uh, you should experience it. Uh, but one peculiar thing about this museum uh, is that every rocket has an SRB, which is a solid rocket booster, which really gives us thrust and pressure to the rockets to go into space. Uh, and as I said, one peculiar thing is every SRB, whether a big rocket, a small rocket, a big satellite, small satellite, all of them, the width of the SRB that you see here is, was always four feet, eight and a half inches. Even the big ones, the small ones, the uh, what you land in moon, what you land in Mars, irrespective, all of the SRBs were four feet, eight and a half inches wide. Out of curiosity, one of my friends started researching, why is every SRB four feet eight and a half inches? And uh, when he started doing his research, he realized that all these SRBs were manufactured in a place called Utah in USA. And Utah is located in a mountainous terrain and it requires a railroad which crosses several tunnels to, to, to reach this SRB into NASA where they use this to, to connect the spacecraft. And every tunnel in Utah was four feet, eight and a half inches wide. He further was inquisitive and went down to detail as why is every tunnel eight and a half, four feet, eight and a half inches? And he realized that's because the railroads, which US had at that time, were all of the width of four feet, eight and a half inches wide. He further got confused. He said, why is everything four feet, eight and a half inches? And he further drilled down to inquire more about it. And uh, that's when he realized that all of the railroads in US at that time were built by Englishmen who had built the railroads in England. And in England, all of those engineers had built the railroads four feet, eight and a half inches wide. He further checked, why did in England they built it at four feet, eight and a half inches wide? Uh, and he realized that most of the craftsmen or engineers that time who built the railroads in England came from Rome. And the Roman chariots, the, the people who built Roman chariots were really the people who constructed the railroads in England. And he, when he inquired further, he realized that the chariot width of the wheel was four feet, eight and a half inches. And these Roman uh, craftsmen or engineers use the same tools and same techniques to build the railroads. He further inquired as to why the distance between two wheels of the chariots were four feet, eight and a half inches. And that's when he realized that was because at that time, most of the chariots used two horses to pull the chariot. And the back of two fully grown horses 
was four feet, eight and a half inches wide. So my friends, the, the latest technological innovation that we have that can fly us into space is based on the back of two fully grown horses, which is four feet, eight and a half inches. What I wanted to share with you is that two things out of the story. One is a lot of times people build without a vision, without a plan, and not realizing that their innovation, their creation is going to lead into the next, next innovations or, or newer things which they will do. So it's very, very important to have a plan. Second is I really like that uh, what Father Benny talked about finding the real problem. A lot of us today uh, don't, don't when, when we look at a problem, 99% of the times that's not the real problem that is there, but people start solving it. What I will advise you and if one skill that you need to take back home is I'm a design thinking uh, trained professional and uh, every problem that I solve today is using design thinking methodologies. And what it helps me to do is really get deeper into understanding what the real problem is and then get to solve it. So it is very, very important that we in our lives identify the real problems before starting to solve it. So with that story, I'll uh, get down to briefly introducing myself as well. That's what Father Benny wanted me to talk about also my, my, my journey as, uh, as, a, as a CDO. Uh, as you can see, yes, uh, thank you for uh, that uh, generous introduction. I, I am the Chief Digital Officer or the Chief Information Officer uh, for Mars, Regla, India and Asia. So all of that blue region that you see here is what I manage. Uh, I have a wife, a beautiful daughter, six year old. Uh, I love spending time with them. I have a mother who lives with me. Uh, my work has uh, allowed me to travel probably all continents except for Antarctica uh, for, for reasons uh, all of you know I couldn't travel there. But uh, I enjoy traveling and uh, a lot of times I take my family along uh, to, to explore these uh, areas or these geographies. Uh, as I was growing up, I grew up in a very, very uh, humble family. And uh, when I was uh, 10 years old, probably my, my, my dad passed away and uh, my mother uh, brought two of us, my me and my brother up. Uh, it were difficult times, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there were financial challenges, there were social challenges, uh, but my mother uh, bore all of them, took it head on and, and made sure that we got the right education, we got the right uh, resources, uh, we may not have got the right pair of jeans at that time <laughs> because uh, the finances didn't allow, but we got the right kind of education, which is probably she worked towards. That's the time when I realized that the, there was an urge or a need within me to do something different, to come out of this whole socio-financial challenge. Uh, I didn't know at that time that that was a purpose for me. I'll talk about the three Ps in my life later, but but that's when I realized my first purpose in life was to really come out of all, all of these socio-financial challenges and be something, be something different. Uh, be, uh, make sure that uh, you know, I don't let down my mother for all the hard work that she's done. As I grew up, I, uh, I, I studied in Don Bosco uh, School in, in Delhi. And as I finished class 10, the obvious choice at that time was either choose a medical field or an engineering field. I was uh, my scores were pretty good. So my school uh, pressurized me to take up biology, to take up medicine. Though I was quite passionate about uh, computers because that was the new thing in at that time. And uh, you know, I don't know how many of you have seen or, or, uh, or done coding in basic and Fortran and COBOL, but those are the languages during those times. And uh, these are new things. And I found it very exciting, energizing for start working on uh, some of these technologies. But uh, you know, my, the, the whole pressure around me was to take up medicine. Uh, in times when, when you don't know what to do, in times when uh, you don't know which way to take, my mother always tells me, trust in God, he'll find a way. So uh, she has great faith in God, not that I have less, but I cannot have as much as she has. Uh, that's when she took me to a priest in Kerala, uh, Father Anthony and uh, to decide actually my career path, whether should I do medicine or should I do uh, engineering. Uh, Father Anthony heard my story. He said, just talk, what do you want? 
So I, I told him uh, the, the story, what I had to share. And after about 10 minutes of sharing, he looked at me and said, he tapped on my cheeks and said, you take up computer science. I took that as a sign of God and, and trusted in it and, and started doing computer science. Then I went on to do my bachelor's uh, in computer science, BSc. Uh, went on to do my MCA. When I started doing MCA, that's when a lot of people told me everybody was doing an MBA, okay? And, and for an engineer at that time, it was very clear. You clear your engineering or your MCA, you land up in a software engineer job and that will take you somewhere abroad. You earn money. And that's the, that's the game plan that uh, everyone had. And uh, me at that time, uh, taking an MCA was pretty much uh, the, the game plan at that time. I did my MCA, uh, came back, uh, started doing a job in Bangalore. Uh, but that's when, you know, inside me, something said, I'm not cut out for uh, really coding. Not that it's uh, all my friends are doing it, not that it's bad. Uh, but, but that's not where my interest or my energies lie. Uh, so there was a constant uh, personal dissatisfaction within me saying, hey, uh, you know, you're not cut out for this. Uh, eight, nine months into the job, and uh, uh, I realized that I need to move out. This is, this is not something I wanted to do. Uh, I came back to Delhi, uh, joined GlaxoSmithKline as an analytics lead. Now, I'll talk about this personal dissatisfaction again, the third team in my life later. Uh, but uh, yeah, very different uh, path if I were to tell you from a career perspective for an MCA. Uh, worked on various analytic tools like ClickView, uh, Cognos, uh, spent about a year there and then uh, went in to join Coca-Cola and uh, spent close to 10 to 12 years in Coca-Cola. Probably uh, you know, I, I would have done any kind of role in the digital space that you can imagine. So I don't know if you've heard of uh, Little Drops of Joy, Boond Boond Kushi Kushi, one of the biggest campaigns Coca-Cola had ever done. I was leading the uh, digital angle or the digital leg of that campaign, of that marketing campaign. Uh, from ERP implementations to supply chain, uh, logistics towers to financial transformations. Uh, you know, I had raised my hand for every possible project there. Uh, to the extent that I was then number two reporting into the CIO of the organization. I was so comfortable in that position there that people used to tell me that you will probably retire from Coke one day. Uh, that's when in one of the conversations, my, my boss or the then CIO uh, told me that, uh, you know, there is no position for you beyond this because I am the CIO. And that day, this personal dissatisfaction again started playing in me saying, hey, you know, I, I need to do something different again. I need to again move up my career ladder. What do I do? Uh, I'll talk about this personal dissatisfaction, the third P again in my life, uh, which, which landed me in Mars as a, as a, as a chief digital officer. Uh, in, in Mars, my, my job is pretty much to do the entire strategy for uh, India, Asia business. Uh, I'm a consumer of uh, technology. So if I were to give you an example, uh, how, how many of you know uh, the scientists who are working beyond, in, behind creating the vaccines that we have today? Uh, I'm sure none of you know the scientists. They're doing a brilliant job, a great piece of work in, in really inventing and doing research and creating these vaccines. But all of you would know the marketing companies which are really promoting those vaccines, right? AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer. Uh, so there is one aspect of really doing the, the work, which is, which, is, which is what I compare to a software engineer uh, who does all of the coding, the research work, creating a product. And what I do in the digital space is consuming that technology to, to provide facility to grow organizations. Yeah, so it's an interesting thing that uh, I do, and uh, I'll I'll talk more about the kind of work that I do, uh, and and coming back to the three P's, uh, you know, these are the three P's which has helped me in my life. First is passion. If you if you don't have passion for something, just drop it. I mean, there is no point going behind uh, any work that you do if you don't have passion. For me. Doing something new in the technological field has always been my passion. I started with coding. I moved on to analytics, tried tools. Uh, so that, that has been my passion to try. My passion was never in creating these codes or creating these tools. And that's why I moved out of software engineering. Purpose. 
The second P in my life is purpose. The, at a very young age, when the, I had a need, I had an urge saying, hey, you know, I, I need to do something different. I need to make sure that uh, I don't let down my mother for all the hard work that she's doing. That was a small purpose that I had in life. It evolved as I, as I grew, as I uh, started working. Uh, but, but having a purpose is very, very important. A purpose need not be big or small. It's yours. It's mine. And it's very, very personal. But if you don't have a purpose, you, you, all your hard work is going to go in vain. So it's very, very important to have a purpose in your life. Lastly, I talked about personal dissatisfaction. A lot of times we are comfortable and convenient in what we do. In our hearts, there is always this positive dissatisfaction which comes in. And we try to shut it off saying, hey, no, it's okay. It's fine. I'm doing comfortable. I'm, I'm doing a good job here. Why would I need to do something different? It's, it's very difficult for people to take up uh, something new, something challenging. A change is something we always avoid in life. But I urge you and I, and I, and I want you to really encourage this personal dissatisfaction that comes, comes within you because that's what, that's what will take you to the next level. That's what will make you as, as people who, who, who others would acknowledge you. Uh, we, we don't do that. So these are the three P's in my life, which is, uh, which is probably I call my success mantra. And uh, I wanted to talk about what inspires me. Uh, the first thing is that I, I always nurture this personal dissatisfaction, which is there with me. At various phases in my life, these personal dissatisfactions have come in. And I haven't said, hey, take a back seat. No, I've, I've embraced them. I said, what is it? Let's take it on. Uh, in my career in Coke, 10 to 12 years, I probably have raised hand for any kind of role without probably uh, a gain, but just to learn what those things are. And, and, and always this personal dissatisfaction has helped me really grow in my career. The second is trust in God. When you don't have an answer to your problems, just leave it to God. There is a plan for everyone, but it is you who would make it happen. A lot of times we complain that uh, this is the plan I chose, but it never worked. Probably that was not God's plan, right? A lot of times today, the challenge is we fail to understand that God's plan. And we create our own plan and say, hey, we didn't do it. We couldn't do it. So when in distress, when you are in trouble, when you cannot decide for yourself, trust in God. He has a plan for you. The third thing what inspires me is, uh, you know, at, at every moment in my life, uh, there have been people who have challenged me, uh, at my mother at one point in time, uh, my wife at one point in time, who always challenges me to be better. When I moved from Coke into Mars, within three months, I would have quit my job and gone back to Coke. Primarily first, because it was comfortable for me. Second, they were calling me back saying, hey, why don't you join back Coke? You are doing a pretty good job. And thirdly, because in Mars, I had a whole different new things to do, which I was not comfortable with. And uh, my wife being uh, an HR head for digital in TCS, uh, she put the right words and challenged me saying, hey, you know, you've been doing the same work for the last 10 to 12 years. Here's an opportunity for you to something to different and make an impression, make, uh, may make lives of several people improve to make better uh, their work environments, etc. And I took it up and uh, it's, it's worked well for me as well. So, uh, that's my journey in a snapshot. Uh, I can take more questions later, uh, but I would like to move on uh, with with my with my presentation. And I have one slide uh, which talks of uh, the opportunity in India. A lot of people ask me, you know, is it is it is it worth to be in India? Uh, you know, even as a software engineer, as an IT profession, as a digital talent, uh, should I be looking for an opportunity outside India in India? And uh, a lot of times uh, uh, we, we get mixed responses. I, I've attended several uh, panel seminars where people are wanting to know, how do I move to Canada? How do I manage how to move to US? And uh, that's, I felt it's primarily because people are not aware of what opportunity India has. So I thought of putting this one slide as India as an opportunity. We all know about 1.3 billion population, uh, you know, and, and in India, the political scenarios, the, uh, the dollar rates not doing fine. What people don't know is that India is going to be the next big market 
for any product that you can imagine. So India is going to be about a four trillion dollar economy by 2025. So irrespective, uh, you know, if the governments uh, don't act, the policies are not in favorable. There is no stopping for India. So if you look at from a 2000 to 2050 perspective, the Europe markets, US markets were big consumer markets. And that's why the economies were doing so good because uh, the more consumer market you become, the more economies of scale you have. So you have the manufacturing setup, supply chain. But if you look at from a 2020 onwards, it's a, it's a big boom for the Asian markets, India and China, which by 2050, is going to grow even bigger than US and some of the European markets. So what's in it for you and me? You know, uh, Primarily you, because uh, you know, I, I probably will be old and retiring by 2050, but um, just telling you by, by 2023 itself, which is in, in the next two years, 75 million jobs will be displaced by shift of labor between humans and machines. So 75 million jobs are going to move away, are, are not going to exist. Uh, I, I, in fact, when I looked at that data, I was going to check if my job will remain. Uh, yes, there's a huge impact on the kind of work and labor people will do, and which is going to be and shifted, moved by, and taken over by, by machines, by codings, by algorithms. But the good part is there are 133 million new jobs which will emerge out of this. And what is, and out of this, 90% of 133 million new jobs which are going to come is digital talent. And this is the place where you guys can really, really make an impact. Another number which I wanted to present to you is about 14% of the global workforce will have to switch occupational categories as digitization, automization, and advances in AI disrupt the world. So this is the opportunity, the big opportunity that you guys have in the coming next decade or so. Uh, with that, uh, you know, I wanted to move into uh, the, the digital, uh, the, our, our presentation today, which is all around uh, digital. Uh, in Mars, to simplify uh, what we do in digital, uh, we, we have big three spokes. First is find the problem with user simplicity. And that's what I told you in the beginning of my, 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 my seminar, my presentation, that if one skill, I will ask you to go and take forward, register yourself, learn is design thinking. Because most of the problems, statements that, that I get today or any of the business guys get today is, is not correct. It's not correct primarily because there is an underlying problem lying. And how do we get to that is through these tools of design thinking and user simplicity. The second is once you identify the right problem to solve, how do you solve them? You solve them through technology. You solve them through AI. You solve them through machine learning. And I'm going to talk of some of these technologies, how I use to solve business problems. And finally, even if you solve the problem, we don't want resources to get used to continue to do that activity. So we again use technology to automate that solution and go and find the next problem to solve. So this is the digital engine that we use in Mars for, for any of the digital problems that we look to solve. Uh, I will talk about four or five use cases now, uh, which I will share with you in terms of how we, 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 we use some of these tools and technologies uh, which are there to solve real life problems. Uh, how many of you uh, know or heard of IoT? Can you just raise hands? I can't see, uh, or you can you can even uh, respond if you have if you know about IoT, uh, you can unmute yourself and just talk about IoT. IoT is Internet of Things. Anyone? Uh, my assumption is you would have heard. No. Yes, sir. Yeah, so anybody wants to give it a shot? What what IoT is? What what is what is Internet of Things? For connecting and interacting with data. Right, 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 Akhil. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, I was a little worried if uh, I put you to sleep. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, IoT is uh, basically a technology where you have sensors which you can plant in the physical world to capture data. Okay, a lot of engineers, a lot of researchers work on creating these sensors. Now, these sensors are uh, deployed on factory floors. Uh, it could be in your uh, house, which is capturing sound. It could be capturing temperature. It could be capturing any kind of uh, data in the real world and uh, give that information back to you. And that's IoT. Now, uh, you know, my job is to really look at that technology and how we, how we can use it for our business. One of the biggest challenges our business was facing, and if you've gone to any of the shop to buy sneakers, even Cadbury, uh, uh, Mars, any of the chocolate, you would have seen these shop or retail owners opening a small fridge and taking out the product, right? The biggest challenge that we were facing at that time was that we, and these chillers are owned by the company uh, or coolers or fridge is owned by the company. And we were losing these fridge chillers because people would take them home. Uh, uh, retailers would take it from one shop to the other. Uh, also, when, when it is placed, we don't know if we want to give quality products to our consumers. And that's one of the reasons we place these chillers because these products are best consumed between a temperature of 2 and 18 degrees. And that's why these chillers were used so that we can give a product to a consumer when it is optimally, uh, it's not frozen, it's not hot, right? It's uh, 2 to 18 degrees centigrade. But uh, we don't know whether these chillers were at the right temperature, right location, or even there. Uh, so one of the jobs that I had was use Internet of Things technology what we did is used some of these sensors, uh, worked with one of our partners uh, called TCS, which really worked on the technology front in terms of creating codes, creating algorithms, uh, creating these sensors. And what we did is uh, remotely, we could capture all of the chiller information like temperature, geolocations, uh, humidity levels of these uh, chillers, and uh, we could really see if any chiller, chiller moves from one location to the other, we could know real time that, hey, somebody has moved this chiller. If the temperature, humidity is not to the optimal, the technicians would automatically get an alert to fix that chiller. Now, we, we had close to 10 to 30 people who were really managing all of this activity. Suddenly with the whole IoT technology, which we put in place, the business redeployed those 30 people into sales teams so that we can drive growth because all of this backend activity could be automated through technological intervention. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's one of the business cases uh, which I wanted to talk to you on, on how do you use technology or how do you use technology or uh, technological interventions to solve real life problems. Uh, the other uh, business case which I want to talk of is uh, Halloween. How many of you have heard of Halloween? Anybody who, who can share uh, about Halloween? I know it's not an Indian festival. It's a, it's a U.S. festival. But any of you have heard of Halloween? Yes, I have heard. Great. What have you heard, Akhil? No, it's just before Christmas, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sometime in October or November. And... Uh, yeah, I used to Halloween. friends. That's why I know about that. Yes, yes. It's, a, it's one of the biggest festivals in the U.S. And uh, uh, the, the festival is all about uh, trick and treat. Okay, And when you say treat, uh, it's a big occasion for us to sell our candies, our chocolates in U.S. and Europe markets. Uh, in fact, I've, I've seen this festival now being celebrated in India as well. Uh, slowly, I, I've seen that commercialization happening. But Imagine in a COVID situation. So, so what happens is the, the, the children or, the, or, or, or kids from a community would go door to door, knock at the door. And when the door opens, uh, somebody would say trick or treat. And depending on trick or treat, they would give a, get a candy from that house. Uh, it's a huge business for us. It's a multi-million dollar business for us in the US. Imagine in 2020, when all of the COVID hit, and people were in lockdown, they cannot go from house to house, uh, how much of loss we would have incurred, okay? Uh, so that's when, you know, we, as digital technology guys, uh, as a CEO or CDO had, uh, we were asked saying, hey, you know, how can you save the company from a huge loss even in a lockdown? And uh, what we came out with was this innovative 
uh, application called Tree Town, which was sitting on the mobile phone of all uh, consumers, and you could create a virtual door. So if I have a house in in an geography, I could create go map my house onto that uh, application and create a door for me, and virtually people could. Knock at that door, and virtually you can ask a question, treat or uh, trick or treat, and, um, and 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 consumers would get a uh, you you could you could or whatever treat you get the candies you get you could order it online it will come to your house directly or you could get a voucher which uh, at the end of the month you could just go redeem at the store. So the entire business of Halloween we served through this the tech intervention or a digital intervention that we were able to do. uh now uh, it's very easy right to create an app but the whole thought of how do you connect the the business uh, story to using technology and making sure the business is in line is something that people like 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 me do yeah uh i want to talk of uh, another case study anybody heard of direct to consumer anybody anybody heard of it i know i am talking of a lot of future technology but uh, if you heard just let me know otherwise uh, good to go i'll give a pause here to know if anybody sort of direct to them great good so it's an opportunity to learn uh, so most fmcg organizations you know i i name the few here mars mondelez coca cola craft unilever png they all have a Have a very complex system of supply chain. So what they do is they do, they they do they do they have manufacturing hubs. So they actually manufacture the product. Then that product moves from a manufacturing to a warehouse location where they where they actually store for a certain time or period. And from these warehouses, they ship to distributors. and from these distributors they go to retail shops or shelves of some of the modern trade so that's the that's the supply chain most organizations have imagine a covid situation wherein even the government allowed only manufacturing so you cannot shift your product from a manufacturing to a warehouse you cannot move from a warehouse to a distributor and the shops are shut you know even if the shops open there are no consumers coming onto the shops to buy your product yeah another example i want to talk about is uh, uh during covid times apart from the essential what do you think is one category of product which have have done really well any idea any guesses i'm not talking of rice or uh, you know essential categories oil sugar uh, but one category of product which would have done really well even in covid times when people were locked down in their houses you know can you guess one category which have would have done extremely well sir sanitizer sanitizers yes but they are essential <laughs> yes they did a some fantastic. kind of indoor indoor games indoor games yes they also did well yes anything else any any other guesses <clears throat> okay uh, so one of the categories Uh, uh which did extremely well and was shocking to me when i when i was going through uh, some of the research papers uh, as well is uh, uh uh is cosmetics okay l'oreal as an organization grew multi folds during lockdown and i was surprised i said cosmetic people generally are using it for uh, face or or and, and and when you're in a, going in about in a mask wearing a head cap Uh, how can this category grow and pretty much these cosmetics sell at a retail store and people try and test products and there are there is no way that you can try and test products that's when l'oreal was very very innovative and they started way back but 2020 they really uh, uh, you know uh, accelerated their journey around d2c and d2c is direct to consumer what these guys did is they created a whole channel where they where they bypass the entire supply chain so no more moving of products to warehouse from warehouse to distributor distributor to a retail point they offered these products directly to consumers 
through online channels. And that's what is direct to consumer, where a consumer can buy a product, a specific product online from the company directly. Who benefits? The consumer benefits because he has to, the cost of such products are much lower because it's not overweighed by the entire supply chain cost or what we call as overheads cost. So there is a cost benefit to the consumer and the company can transact directly with a consumer. So that's the, the big thing that is going to come in. So you would have heard of Mondelez uh, uh, doing a lot of D2C, Coca-Cola doing a D2C, Mars, what we did. And, and this, was, this was something that was thrown to me uh, by, by my uh, CEO at that time saying, hey, Tom, hey Thomas, uh, you know, how, how, how do we, everything is closed. There are no shops to, for consumers to buy and shop. How do we crack that for India? And for Mars, I, I launched uh, in India a direct-to-consumer channel. So if you go to marsreglatetreats.com, that's a channel which is there where consumers can buy Mars products directly from the company. And the entire logistic supply chain is done away with and company will send products directly to you. Uh, here, I, I wanted to talk of the, the technology existed, right? It's probably an app sitting on a, on a mobile phone so we use Shopify extensively to, to really uh, uh, create that buzz, have an online presence. The technology existed. You know, it could be creating a website, an app. But how do you connect? How do you solve for a real world business problem statement and solve it through technology is something that uh, we guys do or my team does. So it's again a business case, which I wanted to talk to you today. Uh, uh, Robotic process automation. It's again a business case which I will talk of. Uh, anybody heard of robotic process automation? Anybody? Great. So let me uh, let me talk about. Uh, uh, I hope all of you are still uh, alive and. Uh, all of you are still listening to my conversation. Uh, if it's too boring, just raise your hands, let me know, okay? Uh, I will talk of robotic process automation, how, how it helps. So in, 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 in the tech world, there are bots or robots, you know, which, which do our work. So uh, I'm not sure how many of you have taken an um, Uber taxi uh, anytime. Have you ever tried an Uber taxi or, or Ola or, or any of these... Uh, uh, app-based taxis. Have you ever tried them? Okay. Now during this COVID, it may not be there. There in, in Kerala, especially. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, yeah. So when you face a challenge with uh, some of these Ubers or even Domino's, Pizza, uh, any of the online uh, providers, today you don't interact with the person on that chat. You interact with the bot. You, when you type a message on the chat window, it is not a person who's responding. It is actually a bot responding at the back end. So he, the, that bot will ask you for your name, your problem, and it would have an engine behind it, which is running on AI, which will provide you a response saying that, hey, this is, this is what we can do for you. If you're still not satisfied is when a problem gets transferred to a real agent who will talk to you, right? That's the... That's what bots do these days, and bots are deployed in, in chat bots. Uh, one such deployment is what I'm going to talk of today. In our, in our business world in Mars, we used to get a lot of orders from our customers. Uh, you know, send five cases of chocolates, uh, send 10 cases of uh, double mint gum. Uh, so all of these orders used to come in email, and there used to be a team of three to four people uh, which used to just read the order and type that order into our ERP systems. Just read the order, type the order, read the order, type the order. Uh, what we did uh, is, is, is remove that entire process using robotic process automation, uh, a tool called Automation Anywhere and Abby, wherein anything which coming, an order coming in on email, that email orders would be read by the robot the content of that order would be typed back into our ERP, which is SAP for us, and validate all of the quantities, pricing, and generate a sales order for us. So the entire process of 
order taking to dispatch of goods from uh, from our factories is automated there is no human intervention now required to to do this activity uh what was required the technology always existed so there is there is automation anywhere there is a product by ibm uh there, there are lots of products which existed but what we had to do was really identify some of these technological know hows and connect it to how we solve it for business the business problem was that we wanted to remove the manual effort now what happened during manual effort is that people would type a 10 case order into a 9 case order by typing error somebody would read it wrongly somebody would and and sometimes it is really difficult for people to understand languages and they would interpret it in a wrong way robots don't have that problem and today all these people were working on an 8 hour shift now these robots work 24 bar 7 and they don't complain they don't complain that they are underpaid so these are the kind of technological interventions which uh, which which uh, which is the job of a cio cdo or, or even my team to look at how can technology solve for real world problems yeah uh, i will move on to last uh, uh, case study which i want to discuss with you and this is about super forecasting so how many of you heard of uh, machine learning anybody okay. i'm i'm not going to uh, waste a lot of time there but yeah uh, a lot of fmcg industry does their entire planning and forecast basis historic sales okay so uh, what we as a company or any other fmcg company would do is look at last year sale look at the trend say you need to grow at a 10% and then put that number that's a year plan year forecast and that year forecast is broken down into uh, half yearly quarterly monthly and then weekly and that is the weekly plan probably salesmen get to sell product right that's how it has it used to be consider a year of covid wherein you haven't sold anything so how can you forecast how can you forecast or have a plan for future so that's when we deployed a super forecasting model based on machine learning with a accuracy of 95% probability and takes 17000 data sources which means it takes a uh, data sources like uh, the historic trend what is the consumer behavior what is the consumer thinking what is the consumer saying what is his liking and preferences which markets are we good at which product so uh, i can tell you for example a galaxy sells very high in kerala compared to a galaxy selling in punjab so this forecasting model actually tells us that you should focus on x products in this market and this is the forecast so one of the interpretations we got from this forecasting uh, model was that uh, 60% of the importance was given to sales post covid it is 36% advertising and 25% sales you know so so the whole the history of sales which was used as information and data for forecasting has reduced from a 60% contribution to a 25% contribution that's the power of machine learning and uh, technology always existed machine learning always existed but how to use it for business growth is something that we bring to to the table as cios cdos with that <coughs> i would uh, uh, wrap up the business case and uh, uh, share with you you know one final story i i like stories i'm a storyteller uh, i like a lot of stories and i'm not sure if uh, you heard of this story on the bullet hole misconception uh, during the second world war uh, every two planes out of three planes were shot down by the germans so which means that if three planes are taking off uh, into a german area uh, the royal air force which is the british air force uh, only one would come back okay two were shot down now germany also had the state of the art technology at that time so uh, one of the uh, uh, you know the commanders or the 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 the, the, the commanding in charge uh, was tasked at saying you know how do we will you board a plane which has a probability of 1 by 3 to, to to for it to land safely no right you don't want to lose people so so the commanding chief said hey we need to safeguard our planes we need all our planes back so how do we do that so they studied a plane which had come back 
on on the bullet holes on the plane so they realize that uh, there were bullet holes on the wings uh, the tail the fuselage at the center this is where all of the bullet landed you know so, so they took a lot of planes to study and they realized that uh, most of the bullets were hitting in this part of the plane so they decided that uh, the obvious thing to do is really uh, you know make it strong in these areas so what does making strong in these areas mean is that uh you would need to add more steel or more aluminum onto these areas that would make the plane really heavy that's when uh, uh, a jewish uh, professor of uh, data science abraham wald uh, a polish uh, actually uh, he looked at the whole problem and said hey wait you know you making these portions of the plane strong is not going to help because if you make it because these are the planes which came back from the war which means that even if the bullet hit the plane at these three places or these four places the plane still came back the planes which did not come back were those planes which hit anywhere other than these four spots so instead of making these four or five spots strong we need to make the other ones strong because those are the planes which never returned because you can't study them they never return back so with that story i just wanted to share with you that think beyond you know it is don't constrain your thinking to 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 what is there in front of you and that's where i started think beyond you need to be a visionary you need to think think more than probably what what you are going to create today is going to be probably used by several other people in future so think think beyond think beyond what 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 you can think of today yeah with that i will pause i'm not sure father if i overshoot the time uh, but uh, that's all i had to share i'm happy to uh, answer any questions you have any clarifications to make it, it was really amazing to listen so even the uh, time because i think the youngsters surely it is all clearly to their uh, future life how uh, discussed interacted anyway now it is time uh, akhil you can just proceed okay father Uh, thank you sir for providing all this valuable information next is an interactive session now the students can ask your questions or any doubts to clear good evening sir i am ashwin my question is what are the basic skills orientations and interests you had in your childhood that are very much connected to the present working areas thanks thanks uh, ashwin for asking that question uh, you know uh, during the childhood i didn't decide that i wanted to be a chief digital officer okay but but i always had this passion to to learn something new something different uh, anything like for example i was telling you right in my in my childhood days uh, coding and basic cobol fortran was was the in thing and i was i was i was passionate about trying with that when i when i grew up analytics was something uh in my early career days uh, which was which was the in thing to talk of business intelligence you would have heard so i tried every tool possible to try how to do that where to do that so so this inquisitive nature in me uh, really helped me learn a, a lot of new technology learn a lot of skills and uh, you know that's exactly what i will uh, recommend to to youngsters like you young minds like you is that never stop learning so the day you stop learning your development stops there uh, i i really love uh, father benny on his tagline uh, he says i am a student okay what that means is that you should always be on the journey of learning you should never stop learning and that's what uh, i do even 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 today you know i i i do a, listen to a lot of podcasts i listen to a lot of uh, youtube videos even before coming to this uh, forum here i did i went through a lot of videos of father benny in the in the past to know what's the trend like what people talk of uh, so never stop learning okay and that inquisitive nature and and the other thing i want to talk of is my third t uh, ashwin is is this personal dissatisfaction it's very important everybody has that everybody gets it but a lot of time because of our comfort nature we are convenient with what we do we tend not to look at it but 
that is what will then that 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 voice keeps coming back to you but a lot of us ignore it don't ignore it. listen to it and that's what will help you grow to the next level hi sir i am nivya and my question is you are burst at technology and good at integrating innovative technologies with management roles how did you develop this both skill sets and what are the challenges in making yourself update and upskilled for both these areas thanks thanks nivya for that question um, interesting question uh first of all as i said uh, don't stop learning every day is an opportunity in fact i i find talking to this group also is an opportunity to learn so don't stop learning every opportunity that you get to learn something new take it the second is it's 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 there are there are opportunities always coming your way but the biggest challenge today is we are not able to identify that opportunity as opportunity the reason is that we are very comfortable in our in our zones in our offices in our schools in our colleges i during my 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 12 years in coke i i mentioned to you that i probably did every role possible in coke not everybody does that i had raised my hand for whenever there was a job opening there was a role if i have not done it i would raise my hand and during the interview most of the time people ask me the interviewer would ask me you don't have experience to this role why are you trying to apply so i have i used to tell them that i have experience for all the other roles which i have done and this is exactly what i want to learn so uh, don't hesitate to raise your hand when there is an opportunity uh, keep learning these are these are what uh, i would i would tell you good evening sir my name is jobin my question is what were your hobbies and creative involvement when you were at the college level yeah jobin during my um, college days uh, you know i was uh, so i think this is uh, peculiar to a lot of it professionals that they are always good at uh, table tennis <laughs> uh, uh i i remember uh, you know I, i i taught table tennis to a lot of people so i i really enjoy playing that sport uh, table tennis uh, and uh, during during my college days uh, i always took time out uh, to 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 network uh, you know uh, I, i i studied in st stephen's college uh and uh, i i all, i took a lot of opportunity to talk to different professors even if i they were not part of my uh, faculty i would go spend time with them i would talk to them i would go beyond college to talk to some of the organizations uh their ceos their cios invite them for seminars discussions into college uh so so going out and exploring exploring all of this is is, is had been my uh my passion during college days hello sir good evening i am danesh sir uh what way computer application students can benefit adding managerial skills to their profile thanks danesh a very very relevant question and uh, let me start with this if you don't add managerial skills you will not be very very successful in your career at the end of the day you know whether you you are you as a bca student as an mca student uh, as an mca professional all of you will be servicing or catering to some kind of a business right uh, as i mentioned to you i was talking of four or five case studies here where the technology is there and there is a business problem so one who creates the technology if he is not aware of the managerial skills of the managerial problems uh, you know he cannot really create a, an excellent or an amazing solution for that real world problem so it is very very important that uh, you you understand real world business problems now uh, how do you gain them right so uh, for me uh, 
post MCA, the natural progression was to pick up a software engineering job, which I did. But as I said, I was not comfortable and that personal dissatisfaction made me move into a business role. Uh, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. So something which I recommend uh, to, to BCA students is you identify your purpose and passion. If you believe that technology is something that you need to pursue, go ahead into coding, do your MCA, go as a programmer, uh, and then you can grow there. But if you identify that you know your, your growth areas or your potential or your passion within digital technology is not really coding, but getting into problem solving, you can always look at this area of work, which is more around CIO, CDO, uh, business analysis, et cetera. Uh, so those are the kind of uh, skills. I hope I've answered your question. Hello, sir. My name is Akil Bhaiji. Uh, so as you already talked about that, there will be around 75 million uh, opportunities around 2023. And also you talked about the robotic automation. So do you feel there will be a conflict <laughs> between the man and machine? In future, so I, I talked of seventy-five million jobs getting redundant, additional one thirty-three million jobs being created. When I said ninety percent of that new job getting created is digital talent, and that's why I said you guys are best placed to leverage that opportunity. Now, uh, conflict between man and machine. My perception and my thought is that. There is never a conflict between man and machine. It is always a conflict between man and a man. Okay, why I say that is man created machines. Now, once the machines were created, they can be used for several purposes. Uh, when I say machines, these are algorithms, these are codes, these are uh, uh, robots, etc. Now, they were created with a specific intent, but uh, you know, uh, humans always have this tendency to, to, to look at the creation in a negative way and, 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 and harm others as well. So, yes, there are pros and cons of, of machines, but uh, I, I shared that number with you exactly for this reason, that if you, are, if you think 75 million jobs get redundant, 133 million new jobs are getting uh, created because of this digital intervention or digital transformation. So it is never between man and machine. It's between man and man. And something we cannot solve here in this conversation is how do we solve for a, for a negative thought of a man? Uh, I really wish and pray that some of the beautiful creations uh, that, uh, that humans have created is, is the digital technology. And I really wish and pray that that's uh, used for the betterment of human race. Good evening, sir. My name is Ashwin, and my question is, we use technology, especially the youngsters are known for tech savvy life, but um, are they clear about the core skills, possibilities, and potency of technology, and how can the youngsters rightly and judiciously learn this? Sorry, I didn't get the last part. How can we? How can the youngsters rightly and judiciously learn this? Judiciously learn this, okay. I, I believe all of you are BCA students, right? That's what uh, was telling me. Um, and if I were to look at all of you, you are positioned as the digital talent. So what I call digital talent is all of you. You know, now all of you in some way or the other uh, would have been in constant touch with technology through coding C, C++, uh, uh, you know, any of the technology platforms you've been in touch with. Now, how many of you have really uh, gone beyond that coding? So uh, even today, so my wife is an HR professional uh, and she hired in TCS and she hires the digital talent into the organization. I was overhearing one of the interview panels and even today, uh, the question which came out was, can you create a program for Fibonacci series? Okay. <laughs> This is a question which probably dates back 20 years ago when I was being interviewed. So, so our education system and our reviewing mechanisms have not changed. But is it ready and equipped to provide solutions of future to organizations? No. So what 
I would ask each one of you to do is go beyond your curriculum, your academics. Uh, I mean, once I can tell you, once you learn a C language, C plus uh, plus, whatever comes. In fact, R, Python, and all. You don't even need to code today. You know, so those are those are those are so user friendly languages. Uh, my ask of you, if you really want to be successful, is go beyond your academics. You know, the platforms like this and. Uh, uh, thankful to Father Benny for really facilitating where you can really know uh, what are those things which the industry wants, what are those things which organizations are looking for, do some research into those areas, do some specialization. So I can tell you if on an interview panel, if I have to uh, identify a BCA student for a job, if there are two students coming to me, if one has cleared academics with 80% and the other has cleared probably with a 60% or 65%, but he has other uh, areas which, he's, uh, which, which he has championed. So like Google Analytics, AWS, cloud technology. I would prefer that candidate over a, over a BCA student who scored 80% because I can use that candidate for his knowledge, put him on a job right on day one, whereas the other person, I need to train him on some of these technologies. So my, my, my advice to all of you is go beyond academics what teaches you. I mean, I'm... I'm sure you guys are very good at it, securing marks and academics. Go beyond that. Learn things which are there in the industry, which, which you probably will be doing and getting your hands dirty doing that work. Good evening, sir. I am Ashwin Kumar. Can you please explain about the management role of technological innovations? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ashwin. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, the, the management role in technology is, is, is what I was trying to explain all through this session is uh, there is a, there is a techno core technology, uh, which, which I talked of a few today, like robotic process automation, IoT, uh, you know, uh, web apps, uh, integration technology. So these are core technologies created by uh, software engineers, developers, organizations like uh, TCS, Microsoft. These are tech companies, right? Who produce technology day in, day out. Uh, automation anywhere is something which I was talking about, robotic process automation. So these are technology companies which creates technology every day. Uh, now, in a business scenario, somebody who is a CEO, who is into management, finance, uh, they have a problem. They don't know technology, right? They are, they are hardcore MBAs in finance, probably chartered accountants, uh, probably a sales leader, sales guys who 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 done MBA in sales and excelled and worked over 15, 20 years, they they don't understand technology, but they have a problem. Now here is one one set of people who is who are creating technology. Here's another group of people who are consumers of technology, and the managerial part of technology comes in when you are able to tie the two together. Okay. So when, and then that's what my job is, when you identify a technology, make it relevant to solve a business problem is when we succeed. And, and that's the managerial role which I play in, in really connecting the two, which is the core technology and the business problems. Hello, sir. Good evening. I'm Nivya Rose. Sir, you are young, but you have reached exposure to various international firms and management teams. What do you see that made you to avail these opportunities? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nivia. Um, and thanks for calling me young. I, very few people do that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm young at heart as well. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, I, I've got varied experience over the past 16 years. Uh, working with various uh, organizations. Uh, I travel the length and breadth. Uh, so I, I told you, right, there's no continent which probably I would have missed. Uh, these may be the fun part where which people see, okay? Uh, there, is a, there is a part to it in terms of how does it result into it, okay? There is, there is a lot of effort which goes into really doing it. Now, I'll give you an example. I mean, 12 years, I was very happy in Coca-Cola. I was doing pretty good, getting paid very nicely. There was no reason for me to find another job or, or move into Mars. Uh, but as I said, this personal dissatisfaction always comes in, wherein 
it questions me in terms of what do you do next what is it that will challenge me to to be better all of us have this personal dissatisfaction but but we we don't take care of it because we are comfortable we are comfortable in our homes we are comfortable in our jobs uh, and we try most of the time we silent it saying hey i'm okay don't uh, pester me uh, with this dissatisfaction right but what i have done is i've always nurtured this dissatisfaction i have not uh, uh, thought about whether whether and and i'm talking of positive dissatisfaction okay don't don't look at the negative dissatisfactions that you have uh so i've nurtured these positive dissatisfactions and and taken and taken them to the next level to see what more can i do and that's what landed me in mars as a cio as a cdo okay so uh all of you should should not get comfortable with what you're doing always keep challenging yourself keep questioning yourself and whenever that personal dissatisfaction comes in nurture it don't shoo it off nurture it Uh, and 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 take that as a challenge to 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 grow to take it to the next level me traveling across uh, globes i have i have always raised my hand for any opportunity so uh during my tenure i have i can tell you i have worked across uh you talk of a stream and ever ever about that so from a marketing campaign to financial tra- finance transformations to erp implementations to business analytics to uh a supply chain i have great business knowledge of the processes of each of these functions and that's what makes me or 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 that's why my uh, gm wants me to be the cdo continue to be the cdo because he knows that uh, you know giving a problem statement to thomas he can solve for it probably because of the experience that he has had in multiple functions and multiple roles and how did i get that is primarily raising my hand for every opportunity that was there i could have been sitting there and relaxing and saying yeah i know this job well i can continue doing it i never did that 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 personal dissatisfaction came up i raised my hands took up the next job again after 3 4 years 2 years again took up a new role i kept moving roles and i kept trying new different things and gaining that experience and that's what has helped me really teach me where i am good afternoon sir i am farsana my doubt is digital and manager roles you are an mca but you provide leadership sessions for managers how to integrate and manage them yeah thanks 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 farsana and uh, i can tell you it is not an easy shift for me as well uh, you know after an mca i could have uh, landed with a software engineer job which i did when i was leaving Uh, or quitting of for about a year in bangalore as a software engineer uh, at that time the the project manager said you pick the country you want to be in you pick the uh, role or the project that you want to be in and we'll send you to any country and that was a dream of any software engineer right i mean you at, at that time uh, and it's different now but at that time any software engineer's dream is you 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 complete your education you get some experience you go abroad earn some quick money come back uh, this is a this is the aspiration but uh, for me i said no that's not what i want to do i i i want to that that personal dissatisfaction again will me think hey uh, you know that uh, you're not cut out for this you're cut out for uh, for asking I questions it. you're cut out for designing things you're cut cut out for trying out new experiments be a consumer of technology and uh, this is not an easy shift for a core technical person to move into a managerial role uh, but i made that shift i i raised uh, my hand for it and uh, moving into managerial role it is very very important to understand business processes so uh, a core technology person may work on a particular piece of technology if it is sap if it is uh, uh, python he'll work on a particular technology but managerial skill is all about knowing about different functions and processes so you have to be a champion on finance processes you have to be a champion on manufacturing you have to be a champion on sales you have to be a champion on supply chain so it is very very important that you understand each of these processes how they are tied together and then bring in your technology head and say hey this is a solution which fits in well so if you cannot if you do not understand business processes 
you cannot be into this role. You you need to understand the businesses really inside out to 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 solve for it. Good evening, sir. My name is Murli Krishnan. Sir, I have a question. What are the job opportunities of BCA and MCA in managerial roles? Thanks, thanks, Murli, for that question. One hundred and thirty-three jobs is what you have. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I I I can tell you, Murli, that. Uh, Uh, you know, with the opportunity which I showed that India is going to have, which the world is going to have, it's pretty much ninety percent dominated by digital talent. And all of you uh, on this uh, webinar today are digital talent. So, so there is a huge opportunity waiting for you. Now, you can pick and choose how you want to, uh, you know, uh, create that career path for you. As I said, there are. there are multiple career paths one of the obvious career path for you is doing your bca going ahead with an mca program uh and then uh, landing up with a software engineer job uh and then uh, go growing that technical uh, skill set and and then working for a tech company probably like tcs ibm uh, cap gemini etc etc the other career path that you can choose is uh, having a bca done and and that's what something which what i do is go ahead explore in the industry join a, an fmcg company and and understand various processes join work for one year you see how the sales is done you see how supply chain is driven you see how manufacturing is done then you go and do an mba and then post your mba do join as a business analyst in even in a tech firm or a cpg organization and then because then you bring in that that amazing talent the combination of business knowledge plus the tech knowledge which is which is really really valued in the industry so so those are two career paths but as far as the opportunity goes sky is the limit for all of you guys i mean the, the next decade or so i would say that uh, uh, you know it is it is going to be all uh, about digital and if you are a digital talent uh, you know it's it's it's, it's your time Hello, sir. I am Pinoy. My doubt is, as we know, there is digital management courses. Is it same as integration of technological innovations into management? Is there any courses available for it? Uh, thanks, Pinoy, for that question. Um, I am not aware of that specific course which you spoke of, uh, but uh, uh, I can I can tell you, no course can equip you. to to pick up a to pick up a role or or excel in the industry uh, as i said there are two career paths even if you so one career path is 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 core technology so what the course that you are suggesting may not be a core technology course uh, which is more of a managerial skill set which is all about uh, uh, some management courses etc but uh, if you really want to pursue your career in in, in managerial path i would suggest strongly that uh, you you explore through a job in the industry so there are a lot of these internship programs which are available uh, uh, with a lot of organizations take care of take take advantage of these opportunities join a company i can tell you uh, you know a lot of times again it is about comfort right you can today's world you can uh, you can reach out to uh, any company gm ceo cio because all of them are on linkedin i can tell you so many youngsters write to me saying you know uh, can we get an internship here in your organization can we try out this for about 3 months uh sky is the limit and i really like such uh, young talent who reach out uh, to industry experts saying can we do this can we do that so no course can teach you all of this uh from a pure academics perspective yes some of these courses can land you uh but if you really want to uh, go higher up uh, i would strongly suggest to do an mba in systems uh post doing some kind of an internship or a work which will pitch you for a business analytics role in any of the organization so that's a career path uh, academically that you can choose good evening sir 
I am Bhavya and my question is changing times needs to have innovative technical solutions. How can the youngsters prepare themselves for being creators of these innovations? Thanks, Bhavya. Uh, a very, uh, innovation is very close to my heart. Um, I, uh, in Mars, I run the Innovation Council as well. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when we started with innovation, uh, uh, we, were, we were trying to define what do we do. So this group of people which I was leading in Mars, they were trying to create new thinking, new thoughts, uh, uh, and, 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 and we spent a lot of money in doing a lot of innovation within Mars. That's when after six, seven months, we realized that innovation is not really only about creating new things. Innovation is also about solving for simple problems. Uh, and that's what I said. I'll give you an example, like a direct to consumer business that I was talking of. It's no rocket science, right? I mean. Uh, uh, somebody who's manufacturing, selling directly to a consumer. It's not rocket science. It existed, always existed. But uh, how do we use uh, this particular technology to, to solve a business problem is, is, is what was valued, is valuable, and adds millions of dollars to the organization. And, and you will also benefit in the end. If I talk of big innovations like Uber, like Netflix, do you think technology played a role? Yes, of course, technology played a role in terms of uh, uh, really how Uber operates through an app. Before that, what we used to do, we used to give a call, right? I don't know if you uh, used uh, Meru or, or any other car company in India, where you used to give a call. Uh, but what did Uber do? Uber came up with an innovation saying, hey, we will give you an app. You don't need to call anymore, right? It was solving for a real world problem, which really landed as an innovation. So. It is very, very important to understand that what do you innovate for? You innovate for solving a real world challenge, a real world business problem. Till the time you do that, the innovations are not relevant. They, they, they just are some real good piece of work that somebody does. But the day that piece of work is able to solve a real world problem is when the world recognizes. So, when you think on innovation lines, always think of what is it that you're solving for? Who is it that you're solving for? Hello, sir. I'm Sandra. Sir, my doubt is uh, we find changes everywhere and the changes are majorly controlled by the innovation in technology. It leads to data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, new equations and patterns of functioning management evaluation and analysis have emerged. So what is the significance of this shift and how should the students prepare themselves for this change? Thank, thanks, Sandra, for that question. Um, and as I said, uh, change is the only constant, which means that every day the world is evolving, it's changing, and uh, you are part of that change. And then Sandra, you people are the change agents, which means that you guys in the next 10 years or so will be responsible for bringing in a lot of change. Okay, so don't shy away. First of all, don't shy away from a change. Don't shy away from new things. Don't shy away from embracing change. That's my first uh, uh, advice to you. And uh, the, the moment you talk of all of this, the I mean, the, the next decade, 15 years, 20 years is, is all about data science, AI, ML. Uh, I talked about super forecasting, right? Uh, the, it, it, it's all about what insights you can bring basis all of that data to, to really grow your organization to the next level. And if you're able to do that, people will value for you. Okay? So, so don't be afraid of change. And uh, your question on AI, uh, ML, etc. Yes, they are the technologies which are going to stay, and which are which are going to really. So when I talk, talked of uh, uh, you know the 133 million jobs which will get created, it is all around the space. It is all around AI. It is all around machine learning. It's all about data science. It's all about uh, uh, integration 
uh, of these technologies into managerial uh, uh, skills and managerial jobs. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Sanjay. Hi, sir. I'm Joel. My question is that how can the digital and technological innovations bring changes to management roles? And what are the ways to organize them? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Joel, for that question. First of all, uh, a lot of these roles will not exist. Okay, so a lot of managerial roles which you see today uh, will cease to exist in the next three to four years. They will not be there anymore because a lot of these jobs will be taken up by probably machines, systems, robots, algorithms. Now, uh, to your question, how do we integrate? That's yours and my job, right? Uh, that, that's, that's, that's my job and that's, that's what I get paid for in how do we integrate such technological advancements into uh, management. Uh, I talked of an example of uh, order process automation, RPA, uh, in Mars that we used. When we started talking of robotic process automation, the, the biggest fear people had, close to 10 people who were working uh, on, on, on punching orders, etc., feared that they would lose their jobs. And, and fairly so. One of the biggest pushbacks that I got during implementation of such technology is by them, because they are the people who are supposed to implement, and post-implementation, they will not have their jobs. Why will they implement, right? So it is very, very important to understand the people aspect of it in terms of how do you manage once you, once you automate a particular activity, once you integrate technology into the organization, what do we do with people? The, 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 what, what we did within our organization is that we trained those 10 people or we upskilled those 10 people so that they can work on technology, okay? So those 10 people, instead of losing their jobs, we, we upskill them, we train them to make sure how can we scale up the robotic process automation that we've introduced for India to other markets. So instead of now needing those 10 people, we need 20 more people, but a different capability, a different skill set that we will need. Yeah? So that's, that's about integration of technology with, uh, with, with management. Hi, sir. My name is Joel Sabu. My question is, what is the future of education? What way our children should prepare themselves in the progressing technological world? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Joel. A very interesting question. And we are already in the new way of education, by the way. With, uh, with all of, I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, you know if we had these online webinars or online uh, classes. So, so we are already uh, started on that journey uh, of, 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 a, of a whole new way of education. Uh, I, if you ask me personally, I'm not very happy with the academic contents which are there today uh, uh, as part of education. And that's where I would see uh, a lot of transformation happening uh, in the next uh, five to 10 years where, uh, where education is not, about, uh, uh, is not about learning a few theories, uh, I, I give you that example, right? Even today, a Fibonacci series question is what comes in the interview panel, which was asked 20 years back. The same question. So uh, I personally, I'm not very happy. And I, I really uh, would see in the next four to five years, uh, this content for uh, education uh, really changing. And what I mean by that is that uh, this content will now be more geared towards you being, being fit or being ready to serve the organizations better. Today, the education is more on theory and, and very less on practical. I mean, that's why I was wanting to ask you how many of you heard of robotic bus automation, IoT, uh, you know, I, and I can gauge, and all of you are really bright students, but the applicability of these, of the education in the industry is what we lack in our education system. and I. And I sincerely hope, and I, I, I know a lot of work is going on in this area in terms of how can we make our education system uh, more fit for purpose, which means that how can we make you, Joel, ready uh, once, once you're finished with your education, how can you be ready to be integrated into organizations 
and and not requiring to retrain you and not requiring to upskill you uh, so that's a big change that i would see i also see a big change in the way uh, the the education is disseminated to students so i see uh, in future a lot of these uh, and and i am part of uh, a lot of these online uh, programs like udemy etc where where course curriculums are online and you go finish that curriculum get a certification for it so i i see that in future a lot of these uh, education program are going to be online wherein the pedagogy of teaching is not going to be classroom it's more going to be online on request i need to spend 7 hours of uh, training 7 hours of uh, 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 of course content which is all available online i just go get that 7 hours of content uh, which is there i give a certification and i'm done so we we will see a shift from this classroom education to to a lot of uh, online education which is which has already started happening uh, it was supposed to happen a little late the covid there are some positives of covid is that it has uh, it has fast tracked uh, some of this digital uh, in interventions which was probably supposed to happen two year three years down it has now already started happening Hi sir, uh, I'm Akshya and have a question. Sir, uh, what would be the basic skills and orientations, uh, aptitudes that a young student needs to have to flourish in the field of innovative technologies? Great, Akshya. Uh, thanks for asking that. And uh, I myself practice it. First and foremost, be a student all your life. Okay. Uh, don't stop learning. Okay. That's that's the basic. Uh, as I said, I. Uh, Uh, I I I I I don't get time, and <laughs> but uh, whenever I get time, what I what I try doing is uh, exploring what's happening in the world. Do uh, so I I I I get a lot of these research papers from KPMG, Deloitte, uh, ENY. Uh, they keep sending me uh, uh, latest updates in, in what's happening. Uh, what I try to do is uh, get myself updated into what's going on in the outside world. What's the trend? uh what's the new thing in uh and alongside i i talk to a lot of my partners to say hey you know what's the new technology which is going to come in what's the next tech thing that we're going to do uh, i can tell you of an example i'm going to launch next month in march something called cloud sourcing okay it's a it's a technology which existed but we are going to use it for mars now to reach out to millions of consumers who will now give us information which we used to do with research okay so 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 i would say keep learning learning you should never stop learning you should keep exploring uh, what's going on in your space in 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 digital technology space uh, beyond what you what you do that's one second is always have these kind of channels for which something like this you know my career my identity which will help you in identifying your your next move so for example if you are doing gca and as i said it is very important for you to identify which track you want to take after gca so if it is a core tech uh, uh career which you want to pick up you should go and do your mca program that's very very important so a formalized education is very very important if you want to grow in your career if it is a, a managerial skill set i would strongly recommend an mba to be done which is which is again a very formalized channel to 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 make sure your career lands so first is you know that that inquisitiveness that 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 uh, quest for learning and second is a formalized uh, channel for your education these two should land you with the right career with the right organization and at the right place hi sir i am anglit my question is how is artificial intelligence transforming in everyday business operation good thanks thanks anglit uh, anglit for that question uh you know when when i was a kid i studied artificial intelligence in books okay in theory so uh you know we i created codes i remember wherein i can ask the question Uh, and and i fill in a database at the back end and that program will throw me an answer okay this was ai today ai is not about books it's about application so you see all around 
uh, AI uh, running in, in its real form. So I don't know if all, any of you have used Alexa. Have you, have you used Alexa or, or, or Google Chrome? So my, my, my daughter today, uh, you know, has, has stopped. Uh, I remember I used to use a cassette player to listen to music. My daughter today just goes, instructs Alexa to play the music that she wants. So that's the change and the evolution which has happened. And at the back end, it's all AI. So Alexa, to understand a natural language, uh, I, I'll give you another example. Uh, sometimes we talk in Malayalam, our native language in uh, at home. And uh, we, we, the other day, uh, you know, my wife asked Alexa to play some songs, random. And Alexa started playing Malayalam songs because Alexa, all this while was listening to the conversation that we are having at home, understood the language and said for this home, for this person, probably the best language and song is in Malayalam. And it started recommending Malayalam songs. It's all AI. So, so AI is all around us today. It's, it's in the form of Alexa. It's in the form of Google Chrome. It's in the form of a chatbot. It's in, it's in the form of uh, Zoom, by the way. So uh, Zoom, if you, uh, there is a feature wherein uh, you can change backgrounds. I don't know if you're aware of it. So, you know, what is running at the back end, back end of that the background? It's AI. So that AI tells Zoom to make sure the face and the body is cut out from the background so that you can see it. I know Father Benny has a blurred background. It's AI running. So it's, it's no more uh, something which is running on theory and papers. It's all around us. And it's going to really transform the way we think. So way we think, way we do. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I keep telling people, uh, my daughter doesn't even know what a dialing phone looks like. <laughs> Where you used to dial a number uh, going round like this. She doesn't know what it is. She, the other day, she, she walked across to the television and was touching the screen of the television. Because for her, everything is either touch or voice enabled. That's the generation that we're living in. And what is enabling all of this? It's AI at the back. So AI is, is, is going to stay. It's no more theory. It's no more uh, uh, code. It is all around us. It's all how we leverage AI to solve for problems. Hello, sir. My question is, in India, a number of businesses has emerged in all the sectors. But here all we can see that they are not adopting the new technology like automated data analysis in the management level and all. Apart from that, IoT and other technical things are not encouraged. There will be a reason for this. No, I, I, I don't fully agree with you, uh, Jeffin. Um, <laughs> in India, are... in yeah, so uh, a number of business. Jeffin, you are clear. You are clear. Uh, uh, Mr. is answering. You just listen. Yeah, so uh, Jeffin, I, I don't fully agree with you. A lot of Indian organizations which are small scale or size of businesses are small. It's the investment capacities which are constraining them to invest in some of these technologies. But as we proceed, that's why I said in the next five to 10 years, the cost of technology is going to radically come down. I mean, exponentially come down. So uh, I'll give you an example. I mean, uh, the, the storage space earlier used to be on a CD-ROM drive, then on a flash drive. Then, uh, I mean, the cost initially was very, very high. And as we progress with technological innovation, the cost of technology is going down. So today, a lot of these multinational companies have already adopted these future technologies. So that's IoT, RPA, uh, they're doing all that stuff. A lot of Indian companies are not doing it primarily because the cost of investing into these technologies is higher. But uh, in the next four to five years, the, the technology costs are gonna drastically come down. And that's when you will see an adoption of a lot of these technologies, even in smaller companies, even in companies uh, which, which do much lower businesses. Uh, if you ask my perspective, if you don't use technology uh, to drive your business, your business will get obsolete because you will not be able to survive the competition 
which other organizations are using technology. So you will be obsolete. So if you are not using technology, better start using it because if you don't, you're out of business. I hope uh, we are just concluding uh, I mean, the question answer session. Uh, it was really amazing, truly, for especially for these youngsters, a path breaking discussion, no doubt, because uh, to them, uh, Mr. Lemon has given the exact picture where they need to work. What are the problems? What way they need to identify the problems and work with the problems? Also, the real journey, the, the path of real pro professional journey, also the picture where, where they need to live. It was very, very crystal clear uh, about, I mean, not the forecast, but it is it is what is happening, which uh, even uh, the, the academy, I mean, uh, the students are not able to identify. So it is nothing forecasting, but it is what is happening in the technological uh, innovative world. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, the dedication and truly, uh, yes, you are young. <laughs> and uh, uh, you have come to this level and there is much more to do, no doubt. Because the conviction, clarity, hard work uh, and, and futuristic vision uh, and the way you work uh, everything uh, truly uh, convincing that you have a greater future. It is not, this is not your, this is not the position which you need to reach. Anyway, congratulations. And now uh, over to you, Akhil. Okay, Father. Honorable guests, HOD, faculty members, and all the participants, on behalf of Naibunia School of Management, I feel immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks. First and foremost, to our chief guest, Linmon Thomas, a massive thank you for taking the time out your weekend days to grace this webinar with your extremely powerful ideas on business leadership, integrating future technologies. You rightly talked about all the values and other pitching tips that can guide us for a better future opportunity. I want to say a huge thank you to Father Dr. Benny Palati. Thank you, Father, so for putting this event together. None of this would have been possible without you. I would further extend a hearty thanks to our principal, Father Baiju George Pontempalli, and also HOD Vinod Chandansa for their interest in bringing the students forward to this event. I take this opportunity to specially express my gratitude to all the faculty members for always encouraging us and providing us opportunities to participate in such events. Last but surely not least, my deep sense of appreciation and thanks to all the students who chose to be live with us and attend this webinar with great enthusiasm and made it a successful event. Once again, I thank you all for being with us this evening. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Before we wrap up, I mentioned this to Father Benny also. If uh, any of you students are interested, uh, I know you are based out of Kerala, but if you are in, interested for a three-month internship in Delhi, uh, with Mars, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to offer, I have one position of internship, which is free. So if you want to, uh, uh, you know, pick up an internship for a period of uh, three months, uh, three to six months, uh, I'm happy to offer it to you, but uh, you need to be in Delhi. So that's why I said that uh, because you need post COVID, you may need to come into office, etc. cetera. Uh, but I'm happy uh, if any one of you are interested and we, we should be able to give a stipend of about 20 to 25,000 a month. So uh, Father Benny, you can reach out to Father Benny or me directly if anybody of you are interested. So, okay, thanks a lot. It was, uh, it was a great session. Uh, so uh, all the very best for your future. Also convey regards to the family, mama and uh, family. <laughs> so thanks a lot. And to the Naipunya community, uh, HOD, uh, Father uh, Pondembali, and, and the complete student team, uh, you receptive and, and participating with a huge interest and preparing questions and asking. So great thanks. Uh, thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you.